The greatest gift God has given this world is the precious gift of grace. Please understand that grace is not a teaching. Grace is a person, the person of Jesus Christ. John 1.17 says, For the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. Open your spirit and prepare to receive, through Bishop Herb Andrew, God's Word of Grace, which is building you up from the inside out, while positioning you to enjoy the inheritance Jesus paid for with His blood. This is your moment of grace. Hi, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this is your moment of grace. Last week, we began discussing or addressing a question, what's in a name? We begin to address that question because Jesus says in John's gospel, chapter number 17, he says, I have glorified you on earth and I have finished the work which you, the father, have given me to do. And now, O Father, glorify me together with yourself, with the glory which I had with you before the world was. In other words, Jesus says here that he has glorified the Father by finishing his assignment. The assignment that he was speaking of can be found right there in verse number six, because he says in that sixth verse, I have manifested your name to the men who, whom you have given me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have kept your word. Jesus says the assignment that was given unto me in this particular season was to manifest or to reveal, to make known the name of our father to his disciples. That led to a question, and the question is, What's in a name? Why is it so important that Jesus would reveal to the disciples the name of his father? Why is it so important that Jesus would reveal to the disciples the name of our God? What's in a name? Well, we discovered that that word name, anoma in the Greek, name refers to the nature it refers to character. It refers to the authority of a person. In other words, when you have a revelation of God's name, you have a revelation of his nature, his character, and the authority that he operates within this earth realm. So what's in a name? A name means everything because Jesus says, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And my assignment in this season is to reveal unto you the Father's name. My assignment is to reveal unto you the Father's nature, the Father's character, and the Father's authority within the earth realm. So again, we ask the question, what's in a name? Look at it, if you would, in Exodus chapter number seven, verse uh, chapter number three, rather, and uh, verse number seven, the word of God says, and the Lord says, I have surely seen the oppression of my people who are in Egypt, and I have heard their cry because of their taskmasters, for I know their sorrows. So I have come down in verse eight to deliver them out of the hand of the Egyptians and to bring them up from the land to a good and a large land, to a land that is flowing with milk and honey, to the place of the Canaanites and the Hittites and the Amorites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites. Now notice God is speaking to Moses here as he's preparing to use Moses in order to deliver the people of God out of Egyptian bondage. They've been there now almost 400 years, and now God is preparing for their deliverance. And in doing so, he says to Moses that he has seen his people's affliction. He has heard their cry. 
He knows their sorrow or their pain, and he has come to deliver them out and to bring them in. That is such an encouraging word when you understand how it is that our God, our Father, is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And the truth of the matter is, no matter what it is you're going through today, no matter what it is you may be experiencing right now in this moment, I have good news for you. And the good news is that our Heavenly Father, He has seen the affliction of His people. He sees exactly what it is that you're dealing with. He knows exactly what it is you are experiencing in this moment. For he has seen the afflictions of his people and he says he has heard their cry. That's good news as well because many of us, we've prayed to God about certain situations and certain circumstances that have come up within our lives and oftentimes the enemy will make you question whether or not our God is listening. Well, I have good news for you today. And the good news is he has heard your cry. Not only has he heard your cry, but he knows the sorrow. He knows the pain that each and every one of us are dealing with no matter where we are in life. He's seen our afflictions. He has heard our cry and he knows our sorrow. He knows our pain. And the wonderful thing that I love about it is that the word of God says, now he has come to deliver them out and to bring them in. Listen, I have good news for you today. No matter what it is you're experiencing, no matter where it is you find yourself in life, our Father has come to not only deliver us out of our troubles, but He has come to bring us in. Bring us in to where? Bring us where? What is it that He is bringing us into? He's bringing us, according to the Word of God, He's bringing us to a large land, a land that is flowing with milk and honey, a land that possesses everything that we need along with some of the things also that we desire. So the word of God says that our heavenly father, he has, he has seen, he has heard, he knows, and now he has come to deliver. Listen to what he says also in verse number 13. The Bible says, then Moses said to God, Indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me, and they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? How shall I answer them? Now understand what's going on. Understand what's taking place. Here it is now, God, he has seen their afflictions. He heard their cry. He knows their sorrow and pain. And now through Moses, he has come to deliver them. So Moses asks a very profound question in verse number 13. Moses said to God, indeed, when I come to the children of Israel and I say to them, the God of your fathers has sent me to you. And they say to me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? Now, that's a very profound question, because think about it. The children of Israel, these individuals have been in Egyptian bondage for almost 400 years. And the truth is, in these 400 years, they have no revelation of who their God really is. That's why Moses referred to God as the God of your fathers, because the fact of the matter is, in being in bondage so long, it hindered and it stopped them from having a true revelation of the God that they serve. That's why it is so challenging, even in today's world, 
with many of us, many of the things that we have gone through, it places a veil over the nature of our God. If we judge God, if we judge our father by the things that we see in this world, we too will be blind to his nature. We too would be blind to his character and we too would be blind to his authority. So these individuals who did not know God, Moses poses the question to the father, if in fact they ask me, what is your name? What shall I say to them? And then in verse 14, God says to Moses, you say to them, you let them know I am that I am. Thus, you shall say to the children of Israel, I am has sent me to you. Now understand, when Moses says to God, when I say to them, this God who they don't really know has sent me to you. And they ask, what is your name? What shall I say to them? Moses was suggesting something that is so, so powerful. Moses was suggesting that there is something about knowing God's name that would empower his people who really don't know him to even yet believe that our God has really sent Moses as their deliverer. In other words, there is something about knowing the name of God. There is something about knowing his names, his nature, his character, his, his, his scope of authority that allows us, or that empowers us to believe and take him at his word. So the question is asked again, what is in a name? Why is this name so important? Why is his is name continuing to come up in this discussion? Well, understand that knowing God's name, knowing his, his nature, knowing his character, knowing his authority, it supernaturally empowers us to believe, to believe who he is, to believe that he is our loving heavenly father and to take him at his word. Notice what Moses says, or notice what God said to Moses rather. God says, I am that I am had sent me unto you. You let them know that I am that I am. How powerful is that? In other words, the father was saying to them, I am whatever they need me to be. In other words, God was saying, look, let them know I am the God who doesn't just give them what they need. I am the God who will become everything that they need. In other words, as you are dealing with the challenges in life, understand our heavenly father. He is not just giving you what you need to get you through. He himself, he is becoming whatever it is you need. If you have sickness in your body, he is your health. If you are struggling with finances, and I know that in this season, many individuals with the prices uh, going up the way that they are, many individuals are, are challenged in the area of finances. But guess what? He is, I am that I am. He is the one who not only gives you provision, but he becomes your provision. Whatever it is you need in this season, remember his name is I am that I am. He's not just giving you what you need, but he's becoming everything you'll need in life. In other words, this is what God is saying to them. And I believe he's saying the same thing to us even now. As they move forward, situations will arise that will present needs and challenges in their lives. Same goes with us. Even as we move forward today, 
situations and circumstances will arise that will present needs and that will present challenges even in our individual lives. But understand that our father, the great I am, he'll use those situations to reveal to us another aspect of who he really is and what he is doing even in our personal space. I guess in other words, what I'm suggesting to you is that you should stop cursing situations that are designed to give you a fresh revelation of who your heavenly father is. If you've never been challenged in that area, if you would have never had to go through what you have gone through, you would have never known that your father, your God, the great I am would manifest himself as the answer to that particular situation. Listen, listen, next week we're going to build on this a little more because when you begin to understand the name of our God, when you begin to understand who it is, he really is, his nature, his character, his authority, it helps you in your worship, it helps you in your prayer life, it helps you in your everyday existence. So we'll deal with that again next week as we continue to answer and continue to address the question, what's in a name? Thanks again for connecting with us today. And as always, I'm Bishop Herb Andrew, and this has been your moment of grace. Be sure to follow us on our social media platforms by subscribing to our Beacon Light of Homer YouTube channel and following us on Beacon Light of Homer Facebook and Instagram pages. Join us for a life-changing word on Sundays at 9 a.m. and 6 p.m. for our Beacon Light of Homer worship experience or Wednesday on our Grace Reloaded Bible Study at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. Bishop Herb would love to hear from you. Leave your comments and be sure to stay connected by subscribing to this Moment of Grace podcast. If this podcast has been a blessing to you, make sure you share it with your friends and loved ones. Remember, because of his awesome grace, our God is faithful to manifest every blessing and benefit Jesus has paid for through his finished work on the cross of Calvary. Our part is to believe, receive, and enjoy what has already been provided, motivated by his tremendous love.